Hello, this is Paranormal Girl and today we're going to talk about puka in Irish folklore. So what is a puka? A puka is a shapeshifter and can only take any form it chooses, but usually it's seen in the form of a dog, a rabbit, a goat, a goblin or even an old man. Traditionally, a puka is seen as a dark, sleek horse with long, wild, wild flowing mane and luminescent golden eyes. <clears throat> An important thing to remember about a puka is that they have the power of human speech and when inclined, make great sport of those that they talk to as they like to embellish the truth. In Ireland, the puka seems to be the most feared fairy possibly because it appears only at night and enjoys creating havoc and mischief. We feel this is doing the puka an injustice because there's no recorded incidences of a puka actually causing a human any harm. So where can you find a puka? Pukas can be found in any rural location. Every county in Ireland has its very own puka and they like open mountainous areas so they can run free while in a horse form. Many small mountainous lakes and springs in Ireland are called puka pools or polapuka, which means puka or demon hole. Some of these are found in the sources of major Irish rivers, such as the Liffey, that runs through Dublin, or the River Ban, which is the longest river in the, in the north of Ireland, that runs through Coleraine in County Derry. Over the last thousand years, Christians had changed the name of some of the puka pools to St. Patrick's Wells. Puka superstitions and Irish customs. There are a lot of superstitions and customs that still observe today in Ireland regard, regarding the puka, and that that vary depending on which region you happen to find yourself in. Although this seems to be a common ground when you talk about a puka, some of the stories are alike and just differ in minor details. So we have a drunken horse uh, ride home story. When a puka is in horse form, he tends to have fun by inviting a rider to jump, to jump on his back. This usually happens when the rider has had little too much to drink and is making his weary way home from the pub. Thus starts the wildest trip the rider will ever know, for the puka loves to terrify the rider with its great prowess, jumping over hedges and rocks and making death-defying leaps. Come the grey dawn, the rider is thrown off the horse. Oh, sorry, is thrown off the horse's back and left trembling, but none the worse for wear from the night's events to find his own way home. This may be where their reputations slip a little, as while on a wild night out, uh, they like to tend to run through crop fields and knock down fences without care. A conversation with a puka. Another thing pukas love, as with all Irish people, is to chat and will happily stop and shoot the breeze with you, sometimes giving great advice and making exceptional prophecies. In some rural areas you'll see houses that will have a bench on the right side of the door and a gate post on the right will be smooth, whereas on the left there will be a rockery of some sort of uncomfortable mound. This is because a good puka will always sit on the right and the more mischievous spirits will favour the left. They tend to use the same opening gambit to introduce themselves as something like You're new here, I think. Many years ago I used to live in this house. One of his favourite topics is how the family lost its fortune or was swindled out of their many lands. The odd thing about the conversation with the puka is that they may have you may have sat and chatted to him for over an hour, but he will suddenly disappear without saying goodbye. They never say goodbyes, and you will be left with an uncomfortable feeling of not knowing for sure if the past hour was real. They'll never leave any sign that they were actually there. The Puka Share Mainly associated with Samhain, the 31st of October and November the 1st is considered Puka Days. 
This coincides with the harvest and the traditional customs that when the harvest is being brought in, the reaper must leave a few stalks behind. This is called the puka share and must be left to appease the puka because we for one would not like to incur his wrath. It is said that when we see the rain falling on a sunny day, which it does a lot in Ireland, the puka will definitely be out and about that night. Also berries that have been killed by a frosty overnight should never be eaten as it's the puka's spit that is on them and would render them poisonous. Puka in popular culture. The puka in all his shapes and forms has made it into many books and films and one of the most famous is Harvey the six foot white rabbit from the play by Mary Chase immortalized by the film in the film by Jimmy Stewart or the infamous scene in Darby O'Gill and the little people when the puka scares Darby into falling down the well and he first meets the King Brian of the Leprechauns. More modern films of pukas that pukas have appeared in animal form as well for example in the 2001 film Donnie Darko. A puka in a rabbit form encourages Donnie to do malicious acts which have a positive and negative result on the people around him. So let's have a little look at some of tales of pukas. The mountains and hills are this strange creature's domains. Depending on which part of Ireland you live, puka was thought to be either helpful or menacing. It's been known to help farmers, for example, and it can also wreak havoc. Generally, however perceived, wisdom holds, and an encounter with a puka is not considered proprietous, as this fairy creature is, is a portent of an oncoming doom. Known for its cunning and wile, as well as lies and deceptions, Puka's archetype is a trickster. It's also a fertility spirit, since it has the power to create or destroy, as well as ability to human speech, as, and it's also a, a gifted prophesizer. November is the month of a Puka. In Ireland, of, of past at Halloween, many children went out with Puka. But others stayed indoors, fearful of stories that they had heard that what Puka did to children. In popular culture, other iconic mystical creatures are incarnated from Puka. For example, bogeymen is derived from Puka. Also, the Easter Bunny, which is pagan in origin, a fairy-like creature that brings chocolate, eggs and sweets to children at Easter, has its roots in fertility, spirit and the theme of a Puka. In the film Harvey in 1950, directed by Henry Coaster, a giant white bunny was inspired by the puka. This mythical creature is also well docu documented in classical literature of Ireland and Britain. The Irish poet and playwright W.B. Yeats depicts puka as an eagle, while Irish novelist and playwright Brian O'Nolan wrote the pseudonym Flann O'Brien was also inspired. O'Brien masterpiece, a swim to, at sorry, at swim two birds features a character called Puka McPhillamy, a member of a devil class. In William Shakespeare's A Midnight Summer's Dream, Puck is a mischievous and quick-witted sprite responsible for setting many of the play's events in motion through his magic. Often appearing as a horse, Puka sometimes gallops across countrysides, knocking down fences and gates, and destroying crops. In this form, Puka liked to take the rider, usually a drunken, on a wild ride all night and shake him off in grey of morning. This person, already heavy inebriated, is also under the spell of the Puka and has no, re uh, sorry, no recollection of what has happened. This often accounts for why many people, having gotten very drunk, report that they have no idea what happened the previous night. The only man to ever successfully ride a puka was high, the High King of England, founder of Brian Dynasty, Brian Baruma McSeneteg, from 
941-1014, to or more commonly known as Brian Boru. Brian managed to control magic of creature by using a special bridle which used three hairs of Puka's tail. Brian's physical prowess meant he was able to stay on its back until exhausted Puka surren surrendered to Brian. The king forced it to agree to two promises. First, it no longer tormented Christian people and ruined their property. And second, it would never again attack an Irishman except those who were drunk or were abroad with evil intent. Although Puka agreed, it appeared to have forgotten its promises over the years. Remember Puka's overlord, the Prince of Lies? Past history records records many sightings of Puka all over the country, but the most famous story in animal spirit that gave its name to Pulapuka, Hole of Puka, at boundary of River Liffey between the counties of Kildare and Wicklow. Presently, this is the site of a hydroelectric power station where river flows through a narrow gorge before plunging a hundred and feet in three stages. Under a second drop, there is a pool that's called the Hole of Puka. Irish author Patrick O'Farrell, 1932-2004, to narrates a story in which inspired by a written account of an anonymous Kildare man. The writer also had an interesting postscript at the end. In November 1813, Kildare Hunt, known as Killing Kildare's, set out. Having indulged in traditional stirrup cup of tipper, crossroads in the Anars Hunt, failed to raise a fox until it was approaching Tipper Kevin, north of Ballymore, Eustace, a county Kildare. Here a large fox appeared and led, of course, towards Liffey. Simultaneously an unmounted black horse appeared, and that did not belong to any riders. It was a puka. The terrain was difficult and the fox ran fast. So near Laffey only one of the members of the hunt, a man named Guerin, and a horse, who was really a puka, remained with the pack. The gorge was in full spate, but the hounds were gaining on their quarry and started to pick their way across the rocks. Seeing danger, Grennan attempted to recall the hounds, but the puka ahead of them was tempting them onward. The fox headed for the ledge on a narrow part of the gorge, and then seeing puka's red eyes spit in fire, the fox jumped. It missed the ledge, falling into a turbulent waters below. The puka easily leapt across the gorge, disappearing into woodlands, but the pack of hounds, hard on the scent of the fox, went headlong into the pool. Looking down, Grennan saw the fox and the hounds trying desperately to swim to safety through the swirling swell. After the hounds dashed across the rocks, they were yelping in pain and dying. He wept as most of the pack went under. Suddenly his sorrow gave way to terror. He heard a diabolical neighing like an animal laughing from the woods opposite. Grennan knew that it was the puka. The writer of the original dis story describes how in 1930 he stood above valleys in Liffey and the King's River. A sudden sadness came over him and he wept. So many humble homes which soon were submerged forever in Bleslington lakes created to supply water for the power station of Pulapuka between 1938 and 1940, 76 houses were demolished and bridges at Humphreys Town, Balty Boys and the Burridge were blown up. Before entire valleys were flooded for the hypo hypoelectric power station, a Protestant church St Mark's built in 1682 was also submerged. To this day, there has been many claims of people hearing bells tolling beneath the waters of the lakes. Lest you think that Puka is just another myth from Irish history, think again. The Puka exists in contemporary Ireland also. For example, it has a strong resonance with events of recent past, and not just symbolically either. Remember the Puka is always around just before disaster. 
Corkborn folklorist Thomas Crofton Croker in Fairy Tale Legends and Traditions 1825 alleges that Puka does appear as real flesh and blood person. Apparently Puka, in a human guise, approaches someone, invigilates his way into the company and subsequently predicts unfortunate events that would befall them. Of course, when adversary, ad, sorry, adversity does strike, this entity is never around. Hidden in its supernatural realm, it revels in joy of watching humans enduring effects of catastrophic events. And there's another little story here. For example, considering this report, recorded by folklorist Owen Hardin in July 2011. On Wednesday 1st November 2006, about 7.30pm, Dennis O'Rourke, a businessman and, it, and an investor originally from Cork City, but then living in, in Malahide, County Dublin, believes he met a puka. A strange and well-dressed man was outside of his front gate at Dennis's home. This man struck up a conversation with Dennis, claiming he had known him for years. He went on to tell Dennis about his family, true facts he could not have known, going back three generations, and how over the years it lost and gained money. This man, who did not give a name, also said that the family finances were based on more than just heritage, and they were also the subject of greater economy of a nation. Over the next couple of years, O'Rourke witnessed not merely fiscal fall, of the country but his own financial ruin including his business his family home and two other houses he had invested in so it would be interesting if anyone has actually seen a puka um obviously the most famous one was harvey the six foot three and a half inch tall white rabbit that came to elwood p dowd uh, played by James Stewart. Um, it is one of my favourite, favourite films. And I don't think, I don't actually think pukas are bad. I do think that they are good. Um, yes, they can be quite mischievous. Um, I think it depends how you treat them. Uh, like Elwood treated uh, Harvey as his friend and then Harvey um, was a good friend of his so it would be nice to know um, that there are some good pukas around 